Before I ever heard Genesis play, I saw an album cover. It was 1977, and I was 13 years old. I came across an LP called Trespass. The cover had a pastoral painting by Paul Whitehead with a countryside, columns, a cupid, and running through the scene was an unusually placed thin line. When you turn the cover over, you realize that this line was actually a knife gash being cut through the canvas. I fell in love with that record, and for me, that cover perfectly captures the spirit of this band. Rebellious, restless, and constantly striving for something more than the obvious. Every musical rule and boundary was questioned and broken. It's impossible to overstate what a huge impact this band and this musical philosophy had on me as a young musician. And I'm forever in their debt, so thank you guys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that inclination to stick the knife in the painting, that urge to break down every musical barrier never diminished for Genesis. It was obvious in the early years, and though more subtle, it was still evident as the band evolved through its different incarnations. What else but rebelliousness, but quiet audacity could prompt a band to write a song in 13-4 time and turn it into one of their first major hit singles? And that hit was Turn It On Again, by the way. <laughs> I bet a lot of you here tonight walked down the street humming along in 13-4 time without ever knowing it. Mm -hmm. My favorite track on Trespass is Stagnation, um, and I'll tell you why. You can hear the lightning strike on that song. You can hear the magic sound of a whole band becoming greater than its members. And that's what this Hall of Fame is all about. It starts off with Anthony Phillips playing a gorgeous seven note guitar melody. And his playing was so critical for creating the initial Genesis roadmap. You hear Peter Gabriel enter with his shimmering vocals and so longing. And there you are at the water's edge that he's describing. And then the band joins in creating an oral painting to support the lyrics. John Mayhew taps on the bell of the cymbal, and you can see drops of water falling into a crystal pond. Finally, everything lets loose, everybody jumps on the melody, and you can feel the explosion of energy. And by the end, Genesis has constructed an entire world, an alternate reality that I could see in my head. That's the power of the best music. Three years after Trespass, Genesis released Selling England by the Pound. That album is without question my all-time favorite Genesis album. Um, the addition of Phil Collins and Steve Hackett brought, yeah. <laughs> it brought both a vigor and a melodic sense that propelled them into another realm. All five members on that record, all five members of the band play with such confidence and such beauty. On Dancing with the Moonlit Night, Steve Hackett, Steve Hackett delivers some of the first rock recordings of both finger tapping and sweet picking half a decade before Eddie Van Halen released Eruption. Everywhere you turn is melody. It's in Mike Rutherford's bass playing, it's in Tony Banks' keyboards, in an era when most rock keyboarding was just padding. And then finally, you have Phil Collins. <laughs> On this record, Phil plays, and actually all through his career, he played the most tuneful and most fluid drumming you'll ever hear. Phil's drums are the only thing that could hold these disparate elements together. More than just glue, his rhythms are the invitation into the song. I think that the pop qualities that emerged later in Phil Collins' career were the very same qualities that made him such a great drummer. Like Ringo Starr and Stuart Copeland and other great pop drummers, he always seemed to be aware that the song came first. It's a very rare quality. As the years progressed, we found out, of course, that Phil is a soulful lead singer. And with him at the mic, Genesis leapt into the stratosphere with a canon of pop hits, including Misunderstanding, No Reply at All, That's All, Invisible Touch, and many others. When you're a musician and you break new ground, it resonates into the common consciousness. People absorb your creativity, sometimes without even knowing it. When I hear Radiohead's Kid A, with its odd time signatures and spacious visual arrangements, I hear Genesis. I hear Genesis and the sonic islands that My Bloody Valentine placed between their songs. It, <clears throat> it's interesting to me that Brian Eno, before he produced U2, before he produced Talking Heads Remain in Light, spent who, many, who knows how many hours a day 
sitting with Genesis, producing The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway. 99% of the people who played prog rock lost their songs to their egos. Ideally, the point of music is community, not the player. Musicians are simply channels to link the audience to the music and to each other. Genesis understood that always. I'm guessing that most people in this room have never listened to Selling England by the Pound. You cannot buy the greatest hits record and understand what I'm talking about. But there are so many people that I'm speaking for tonight who know exactly what I'm talking about. I have been a true fan of this band my whole life from the, a very young age. And for those people that I'm talking about the, and for myself, this is our moment. And of course, Tony, Michael, Peter, Phil, and Steve, it's yours. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the quiet rebels of Genesis into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. <laughs> 